and welcome to Safe Schools. I'm Curtis Graves. And I'm Andy Howard. Andy, my man, what's going on, dude? Well, Kurt, I think we got a great show today. We do. Uh, I'm, I'm excited, and I look forward to our guest this, uh, this particular uh, program. We're going to have the Mobile County Health Department today and some folks from the department along with some students, uh, part of uh, Think About It. Think About It. That's the name of the program that the health department sponsors, and it's got students from the Mobile County uh, Public School System participating in it uh, as a outreach to the community from the health department. A lot of good stuff, folks. We hope you stay tuned. We'll be back. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So, what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything? Any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So, how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. And welcome back. Uh, we have with us two guests. Uh, our first guest I'd like to introduce is Ms. Uh, Nitra Bell Henderson. She's a consultant with the health department. Welcome and good morning. Thank you. Morning. Thank you for having me. And uh, we also have with us Ms. Uh, Cameron Chapman. Uh, she's a Davidson High School student and a member of uh, Think Team. Is that who I'm talking to? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice to meet you this morning. Big Thank smile, you I tell you. All right. Let's get into our discussion, folks. All right, first question is going to go to you, uh, Anitra. I can call you Anitra. You right? can call me Anitra. All right, Anitra. Look here, I want to ask you about the teen uh, pregnancy prevention program with the health department. Tell us a little bit about that program. Well, as you said, the teen pregnancy prevention uh, program is a part of the Mobile County Health Department. Uh, we branded it Think Teen, and it is an initiative. It's actually a grant that's funded by the Center for Disease Control, and it started in 2010 and it goes through 2015 and the overarching goal is to reduce teen pregnancy by 10 percent but it's also to uh, reduce risky behaviors of young people and when we say young people we're specifically talking about ages 10 through 19 okay. and one of the wonderful things about this grant that they gave us specifics in the uh, realm of five components mm -hmm. that we have to work in, which is youth mobilization, uh, access to clinical care for young people, uh, access to evidence-based programs, as well as stakeholder education and working with diverse communities. But those are the only parameters they gave us so we could kind of put our arms around it and make it what it needs to be for Put Mobile your own County. stamp on it. Basically. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. And we talk about uh, stakeholders. How are you putting your stamp on it? How are you educating stakeholders? And stakeholders, we understand in our line of work, as well as you all do, that we are all, everybody's part of the stakeholder initiative uh, with public education, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Right. You would agree with that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking at you. All right. Don't pick at my kids. All Don't right. pick at my kids. <laughs> um, but absolutely, the stakeholders, when you think about teen pregnancy prevention, we usually just think about the girl. But uh, teen pregnancy prevention and reducing risky behaviors is a workforce development mm -hmm. issue. It's an educational issue. It's an economic development issue. And so we're talking about uh, city and county officials. We're talking about parents, mm -hmm. boys, uh, community resident, residents. Anyone can be a stakeholder in this uh, process. We're all responsible. We are all responsible, and, absolutely. And that's certainly something we want our community to appreciate our effort and our uh, mutual responsibility to the young folks in our community. Uh, our community progresses as our young folks progress. Absolutely. So, um, the initiative uh, with young folks, that was one of the elements of your five elements. Right. Uh, what, what does that involve? 
Well, our youth mobilization piece um, starts with our youth leadership team, which is comprised of 36 students across Mobile County that come together and talk about advocacy. Um, how to reduce risky behaviors. It's direct peer-to-peer -peer education. We have great students, as you can see, one of mm -hmm. our students is here, and they do a wonderful job. Uh, we teach them about media relations, about reducing risky behaviors. They actually go through an evidence-based program, and then they go back into their schools and teach their peers. So we're really, really excited about the youth mobilization piece because it is it has taken a life of its own. So youth educating youth. Youth educating youth. How do you feel about the program, Ms. Chapman? I feel that it was very beneficial to us as teens because typically when you are given directions from or advice from an adult, you're kind of on the the like the side of it, like mm -hmm. you're borderline and you're on the surface with it. Mm -hmm. But when you're coming when it's coming from another teen or one of your peers, you take it you take it into consideration more because well, sometimes a teen may just feel like, okay, I don't care, there's an adult, blah, 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 blah. They just want to do, yeah, they you know, what's... They don't know my life. Yeah, exactly. You know, they don't know my perspective. But, yeah, but as teens, you understand each other and you... I mean, though we don't have as much experience as an adult, and we should listen to adults, but coming from another teen, you just take it into more consideration and you would listen more. You know, you know, the thing that I like most of all is something that you talk about all the time. And it's kind of funny when you think about it, but it holds true. Andy likes to say that sometimes they don't know that they don't know. Absolutely. Okay, that makes sense to you all? Mm-hmm. Okay, now, given the fact that you all embrace that and you all are working with adults who are helping to direct you toward uh, understanding things better allows you to go out and facilitate that mm -hmm. same information by teaching others um, the important because it's received better, right? Yes. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that. The concept of peer pressure, you know, a lot of times when we think about peer pressure, it's frequently perceived as a it's negative, negative thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the idea that peer pressure can be a positive mm -hmm. thing is equally significant and has great potential as well. That the pressure that you all are presenting to your peer group mm -hmm. is to make positive decisions and, and, and have a positive impact on your peer group. And we're grateful to that effort on you all's part. And with that question, Anitra, uh, why do you think, I mean, I understand it, but I want you to tell the public, why do you think that in this initiative is important to the Mobile County Public School System? It's extremely important to the Mobile County Public School System because you house majority <laughs> of the children mm -hmm. and they are with you most of the hours of their day. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do here, because this is the millennial generation, this mm -hmm. is the instant generation, They they know about instant microwaves and oatmeal. Right. They don't know about the TV having mm -hmm. to warm up. So they want things quickly. Yeah. And so with this, uh, with this program, we're building their capacity. We're not telling them what to do. We're arming them with information and letting them teach one another. And the great thing about that is this, is that we want to continue this conversation, but we have to take a short commercial break. Okay. Diesel is a very big industry. 90 seconds. Okay. I went into a, in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, what, all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. Together now, we can make it better now. Come on. Moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find out more. The quality of education that I received from the Mobile County Public School System really prepared me for global success. Being uh, an international opera singer, I get to travel all across the world. And one of the most important aspects about that is being able to communicate and work with people. And the Mobile County Public School System really equipped me to be greatly successful worldwide. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. 
let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay, we can check that right here. Wow, Nicholas. Hey, and we're back. Um, Nitra, finish your, your, your statement to the public and to us about why uh, this initiative is important to the Mobile County Public School System. Absolutely. As I was saying, you know, our, we're building the capacity of these young people to actually go out and engage their generation how they want to engage their generation. It's definitely through the social media platforms, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, but we're also going towards parents and businesses. Businesses are now booming in Mobile County and they've got to have those students that are ready to be uh, productive citizens. Right. And that means that they have to reduce their risky behavior in order to receive those jobs, uh, making sure that they're healthy and have their best quality of life. And so we are arming with those five components that I talked about to build the capacity of the community to be able to receive the information and also reduce our risky behaviors. Okay. Um, I want to give you to notice that there's been a slight change. <laughs> uh, I'd like to introduce another one of our teens, um, Miss uh, Hunter Spade. Say your last name. Shaveri. Shaveri. <laughs> Welcome, Hunter. Where do you go to school, Hunter? I go to Murphy. Murphy High School. Welcome. And I uh, got a couple of questions for you now uh, Miss uh, Manitra made a comment uh, about decision-making and one of the recent initiatives that you all have brought uh, on board is the let's talk initiative can you kind of expound a little bit on let's talk um, yeah we had October we actually had the proclamation ceremony making October 2014 let's talk month and it's coordinated by advocates for youth and it's a chance for community facilities, churches, schools, all to get involved and get parent-child communication about health and reproductive health in general. So. Okay, let's talk. That's you know that's significant, uh, Anitra, because when we interact with each other, as you mentioned about this internet, this com communications through technology, we don't do enough talking. Uh, we're talking in different ways, uh, but that, that direct conversation has to be had between the parent and the child, and that's what we're, we're working on. One of those working with diverse communities is our parents. I can uh, assume what you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. Uh, our kids, we're finding that our kids want to talk about. Right. Mm -hmm. But the parents are not ready to have that conversation. They don't know how to bridge the conversation mm -hmm. or start the conversation. And so we have a lot of uh, pointers on the website thinkteen.org mm -hmm. where they can learn how to be begin that conversation. But we're also learning that parents want to learn uh, tactics on how to be good parents. Right. And, and again, you understand as well as we do that that you have to more or less break that barrier of communication and be willing to talk because if not someone else is talking to them thankfully you guys are talking to them and we appreciate that uh, but we don't want internet communication being the sole source of information sure. um, Hunter, I'm going to call you Hunter. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. <laughs> <laughs> How has being part of the YLT changed your thoughts around making good decisions? Um, well, it's not only about us making good decisions, but it's also about our peers making good decisions because their decisions affect us and not only us, but everyone around them also. So what are some of the things that you guys are doing in that vein to try to make that happen? Um, we actually, we had a Bay Bears Think Teen Night for Pregnancy Prevention Month, Teen Pregnancy Prevention Month. We had mm -hmm. a skate night that we hosted with Mobile Kappa League, passing out information about teen, Think Teen. We had a no flag zone rally. And the point of all these things is to get them involved in a positive manner, a fun manner. So it's, you know, it's a good time. It's not just, you know, some boring thing where they sit down. It's a fun time, but they're also getting educated. We can get together, we can enjoy each other, mm -hmm. and do constructive things yes. and positive things. Yes. And that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah. It is. I guess so obviously the second question kind of you just answered it for me really I was going to ask you do you believe that your involvement um, 
in this, uh, on this team uh, affects your peers uh, that you educate? I would imagine giving your response, yes. Yeah, and it, they, they don't, it, they help us educate them with the correct information instead of, you know, I heard from them, I heard from right. them. We're getting the correct information to give to our peers. Okay. You all um, are in a bunch of schools now, aren't you? We are in a lot of schools, <laughs> yes. Um, a bunch. A bunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we've got uh, 90 schools in this district, but most of your kids are high schoolers. Yes. And uh, those high schoolers are spread out across the county. Uh, many of the city schools and uh, many of the schools along the city's perimeter are have students involved in your program, is there? Right. With this uh, teen pregnancy prevention initiative, uh, we did have uh, 10 target zip codes that mm -hmm. we were working in and we wanted to make sure that we had a youth leadership team member in each mm -hmm. but we had such a resounding uh, want and need in the other high schools that were not in those zip codes that now we have students all across Mobile County in um, most of the high schools actually wow. what eight or nine high eight, schools eight right high now schools. Yes. so to those high schools that are not involved Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're looking for you. Absolutely. All right. Well, you know, that's a good thing when they come to you uh, and want your initiative uh, in their facility. That apparently means you've got a good message and people are interested in hearing it. And, and it's having some effect, I, I have to suspect. And, uh, you know, this is a skill set that you all are gleaning also, this ability for you to recognize you're impacting and able to impact other people and make a difference in how other people function and make decisions. So we appreciate that, uh, that you all have chosen to do that. How did you manage to uh, get involved anyway? I mean, how did we do, how did we do that? Oh, it's actually a funny thing. I, the first thing I noticed about them was T-shirts that they used to wear. And I was like, I really like those shirts. The shirts were cool. That's yes, cool. So you shirts. saw some cool shirts. Yes, and then okay. I looked deeper too, and I was like, this is something I'd be interested in. So then I had a member tell me when I could sign up. And I signed up, and I like it, and I like my shirt also. So. Oh, so, and now you have your own shirt. I do. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, besides the shirt, you're doing more than, you know, a, a cool shirt, right? Yeah, this uh, is much more, yeah. Yeah. Now, our youth leadership team members, it's really not just a, a Mobile County initiative. Uh, we have five national partners uh, from Washington, D.C. that help us mm -hmm. with this initiative, and so our kids are learning what other kids are doing uh, across the United States. Uh, we've been to Washington, D.C. to actually present what our kids are doing uh, with the youth mobilization. And so some of the other grantees, uh, like New York City, Boston, Massachusetts, are actually letting us take the lead on the youth mobilization because our kids are taking this initiative and running with it. They're making it their okay, own. So they actually embraced it when you guys presented it. Absolutely. Cool. And with that, uh, Anitra, we're going to take a brief break, and we'll be right back. Nonviolence will start with me. Nonviolence will start with me. All across the Mobile County public school system, students are taking the pledge. I pledge to accept the responsibility of my actions. To solve problems peacefully. Respect myself and others. The 100 Days of Nonviolence Pledge is an initiative to help explore alternative means of stopping violence among school students. Will you take the challenge? Get involved. Take a stand. 100 Days, 100 Ways. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. And we're back. And uh, I'd like to introduce our, our current guest. Uh, we have Miss uh, Jessica. Thames. Uh, she is a YLT coordinator 
uh, with the health department. Welcome. Thank you. And Jessica, um, I want to ask you this, and I think, Andy, were you about to ask the same question? Go ahead, Kurt. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to ask questions, man. Hey, uh, what is your plan for the YLT in the future right now? Our plan, as we discussed earlier, Anitra um, spoke about earlier, how we have YLT members in each school. Our plan is to actually have a youth leadership team of multiple students at each school, not just to have one representative. We want them to have an organization on campus where they could focus not only on teen pregnancy prevention, but other issues that teens um, deal with, just to advocate around their school for just issues that they deal with each and every day. Okay, now we failed to introduce another guest, Andy. Well, let's make sure we take care of that now. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have as, all, as a guest, Miss Taylor Graves. Uh, what school do you go to? Go to Murphy. Murphy High School. Yes. All right. Welcome from Murphy, Murphy, Taylor. Taylor, we're going to throw you right into the fire, too. We're going to ask you this question, the same question we just asked Miss Thames about uh, what, are, what are you all's plans as being the team leaders here uh, with YLT? What are, you, what are you all's plans for the future for the program? Well, we want to see at least one student in the actual program from every school to be in it, just so like everyone at that school can feel like they're a part of it. And so we'll have, like Ms. Thames said, clubs, which we'll, what they'll call them clubs at each school. So like, it's like we'll call them our teams, basically. Right. And so they'll be our teams at hopefully every school one of these days. <clears throat> okay. And hopefully we can just get everybody involved and get the entire Mobile County to know what Think Team is and what we do, and this is important because this is just as important as uh, some of the stuff that they're teaching in classes because you have to have good health, good mm -hmm. behavior, good um, decision making to enable to be successful in whatever you do. Because you all understand the importance of what they're trying to focus on and the fact that eventually funding runs out, okay, but you want the sustainability to be there. You want the public, you want the educational system, you want all these stakeholders to invest in the importance of you all's program because it's not just you all's program, it's everybody's program. You, you it mentioned that everyone. this was coming, uh, you want to try to be in everybody's school. How can, how can a school help to make that happen? Just cooperating with us and like if we give information to like a principal or administrator and say, can you tell this to your students that they actually tell them they don't just dismiss us as any other Fun club, we don't do much because we really do do a lot of things with students. And to just be able to s actually announce it over the intercoms in the morning and the evenings and to hand out flyers and to like have the teachers especially know that what, this is what we're doing and this is what we're about so they can tell their kids, you know, in the last five minutes or the first five minutes of school and not to like get in the way of whatever they're teaching, but to just make sure that the kids actually know and that they can hear what we're trying to say. Ms. Thames, if a school was interested in doing, uh, adding or increasing their participation in this program, how would they uh, reach out to you guys and make that happen? Well, they can um, contact us by going to our website, thinkteen.org. All of our information is there and our contact information is there. So if they want to get involved, they can just contact myself. My information is on there, email address and phone number, and then we can make it happen. That's at the health department's website? It's on thinkteen.org. On thinkteen.org. Yes. I think we actually have some photos as well, if we can get those up just to kind of talk about them a little bit. I see you there, Miss Thames, uh, with a group of kids. Can you tell us a little bit about that thing? Yes, that was from our No Flex Zone when we talked about advocacy. We focused on some issues. Um, the acronym was RACE. We talked about research, um, uh, educate, create, uh, communicate, and uh, um, educate. And so we went through this activity where we had them think about an issue and go through the um, activity of how to advocate for that issue. Okay. Uh there's another slide. Can you tell us about that one? Yes, that was them presenting um, what they were, um, what they thought about, and that was also about Hawaii Robertson, about child safety, okay. and they were discussing the issues of how we can um, deal with child safety a little bit better. So the issues of the day. Yes. Not just one topic, but the many topics that young folks are talking about. Another huge turnout out. here too. Where, where is that location? That was located at the Bright Spot, Mount okay. Hickam's um, Bright Spot in their gym. Okay. And that's a fairly large group of people. Yes, we had that. about yeah. 65 students to come out and join us, and we had a okay. huge photo shoot with them to come out and represent their organizations and their schools. Okay. What are the next steps you think should be um, for the community in terms of uh, 
getting this going? Um, it's more just collaboration. We want the students to continue to want to get involved. We want the parents to get involved with their schools and get involved with the community to know what their teenagers are thinking and what they're doing. Um, just more community involvement. We just want the community to come together with schools um, and just get together and make sure that we are trying to focus on bettering our teenagers' lives. Okay. And when we talk about parents and teenagers, uh, we're talking about getting more information mm -hmm. out to them and just making sure that, that there's always an opportunity to get information about this program and other programs yes. uh, that you all are sponsoring. Yes. All right, Andy? Well, um, I'm just wondering what ne what's next? Um, you all have some additional initiatives coming up in the future. Yes, in February we um, focus on Teen Date and Violence Month, so we will have some activities around that. And Also in May we focus on Teen Pre Pregnancy Prevention Month, and we're going to have some activities coming with that. So if you follow us on Think Teen, um, thinkteen.org, or follow us at Instagram at thinkteenmc on Twitter and on Facebook, you will get more information about that. That is usually important stuff, and I'm glad we're talking about that kind of thing. You know. I'm in a school all day, and I hear kids talking, and so, you know, I know that that's, those are issues that young folks are concerned with. And, you know, I mean, is, this, is that me thinking I hear that, or are kids talking about those things? Kids, we really do talk about those things. Like, when we're on social media, it's like how we are connected with everything that's going on, and we do talk about it. And like when someone had mentioned earlier, like, you just can't do it through social media. You actually have to have that face-to-face -face conversation. But getting out through social media lets a uh, whole n another area of kids who might you can't you might not see or who might not live anywhere near you know what's going on, and it's like a great way to spread things so that you can have that face-to-face -face conversation one day. I think we have time for one more question. I want to ask you this: um, What are your plans? Because all of this is geared toward preparing you for the future. Okay, making you think about what's next and how do I get there. What's next for you as, as a Think Team member? What's next for me? I would just like to see Think Team expand and be a part of that any way I can. A lot of kids come up to me at school and say, oh, I like your shirt and stuff. So I tell them this is why I have the shirt because of the organization and then they actually get interested in what we do. Okay. So I just want to be there any way I can. But your future goals are what? You're My planning on goals? college and all that, right? Oh, I plan, yes. I want to go for a pre-med major in English and I just, I feel like being in this organization has taught me more than just about health and decision making. I feel like it's taught me, they, we do talk about college plans and stuff, and so I feel like it's taught me how to like get those goals and how to achieve those things. And with that being said, unfortunately we are out of time. We appreciate you and you, you. and Thank everyone you. else that participated in this panel today. Um, and for our guests, thanks once again for sharing your time with us. Uh, we hope to see you again real soon. Remember, safe schools.